we start with a heuristic called minimum remaining values MRV this is also sometimes called most constrained variable okay so this heuristic says when you are choosing a variable to next give an assignment choose a variable that has the minimum remaining values minimum remaining legal values that is choose a variable with fewest legal values the idea is if you do that if the algorithm will detect a variable that can cause a failure soon and therefore it will uh, prune the search we don't have to waste too much time searching the uh, many other variables that will lead to a failure because if there is a variable with zero legal values then this heuristic will select it and it will immediately lead to a failure and then the algorithm will backtrack and choose another option okay otherwise failure will be detected will be detected after exploring pointless variables so this is basically the idea of the algorithm choose a variable that has fewer available values because if it's gonna fail it would be much fail it might it would be much easier to fail if there are a few options than if there are many options so the algorithm will fail quickly and choose a better variable that will give a, a valid solution uh, for example consider the australian problem again suppose we have chosen red for western australia and we have chosen green uh, also for northern territory now now we want to select the next variable obviously we have many variables left we have south australia we have queensland we have new south wales and so on the question is which of these variables should we select next so this heuristic says choose the one with uh, minimum remaining possible values for example south wales the only possible value here is blue among the three possibilities we have it cannot be green because it is already bordering northern territory which is green it cannot be uh, red it is not bordering uh, western australia which is already red so the only option here is for it to be blue whereas here the remaining values are two it cannot be green but it can be red or uh, blue this can be even three so this heuristic says don't try queensland next or even south wales uh, no uh, you select uh, select south australia first because it has the minimum remaining legal values which is only blue so this is why we are selecting this to be blue and then the algorithm will continue okay uh, let's see this in another example okay so here we have nodes again to color uh, all other nodes except the first have three options either red or blue or green only the first node here can only be red and as usual the edges represent the constraints so the edge here is saying these two connecting edges cannot have the same color all right so suppose we start with uh, this one because according to the algorithm choose the one with minimum remaining value well this node originally has only one possibility it can only be red so this is the natural one to start with all right, but the moment you choose that, then the remaining values uh, for for this node 
and this now remain two okay this cannot be red anymore it's only blue and green and similarly here so suppose we choose this one so this is just random you could have been any of this suppose we choose blue for this then uh, the next one this node here <coughs> I will have only one possible value which can only be green all right so we make it to be green and that automatically remove one possibility from this node so this node can be either red or green but this one has only one possibility because it can neither be green or blue therefore according to our heuristic minimum remaining value we should choose this variable next so we're going to choose this variable and make it right this is the only possible value it has can either be green or blue all right and once we make that to be red that automatically reduces the possible color for this last node to be blue it cannot be green or red so you can see with this heuristic we are able to assign these colors directly without ever needing a backtracking and that's what makes this uh, heuristic very good actually uh, it may not solve the problem in all cases but usually it will allow you to reach a solution much quicker yani sometimes you may have to do some backtracking in this case we didn't have to do any backtracking all right so this is the idea of minimum remaining value heuristic next heuristic is called must constraining variable mcv this is also sometimes called highest degree heuristic highest degree heuristic so what does this say it says select the variable that is involved in the largest number of constraints on other unassigned variables all right select the variable with the largest number of constraints the idea is if we choose the variable with the most constraint on the remaining variables it is likely to prune the options for the other variables and therefore we can quickly reach a solution this is what we are saying here choosing such a variable will reduce the domain of all the connecting variables and therefore pruning the the search now this is often used as a tiebreaker in in case of mrv as we notice for example when we start the australian example all the variables initially they can take three possible colors so we cannot apply minimum remaining value at that time because they are all equal so one possible thing to do is to go for this this heuristic uh, it it will probably give us a tiebreaker it will tell us which one to go among those variables okay so it is often used as a tiebreaker for mrv but what does it actually mean this is what it means here for example when we start all the variables they have the same number of remaining values they are all three but if you look at our graph sa has the most connection with other variables it is bordering five regions one two three four five all the others are either three or two except uh, tasmania here which is disjoint so it's not directly linked to any particular state so, so this can be any color actually so this heuristic is telling us we should color uh, south australia first because if we do that automatically it reduces the possibilities for these other variables to two immediately all of them will be two okay 
So suppose we decide to assign blue to South Australia. Then uh, we can choose, for example, green for Northern Territory, uh, red for uh, Queensland, and so on. But basically, this is what the algorithm is saying. Choose the um, most constraining variable, the one that constrains other variables the most. Let's see a full example. So the same example as we saw earlier, the only thing now is we want to try the MCV heuristic. So here we count the number of connecting uh, states from this particular node. This is connected to four different nodes. This is connected to two. This is connected to three, three and two. And therefore our heuristic says we should go for this node. It has the most constraining variable. So we're going to choose that to be red. Uh, it's not going to be good eventually because this can only be red. So we may have to be a backtrack at some point. Okay. But suppose we choose red. Then automatically uh, the next, according to this heuristic, is to choose the ones that are connecting three states or three nodes. So suppose we choose this one randomly. Obviously, it cannot be red. So suppose we make it blue. Then the next one, in terms of the number of arcs or in terms of degree, is this one. So this has to be green then. And then we can now look at those with two arcs. And if we choose this one, it can take blue. But then if we attempt to try this one, we will be reaching an, a dead end, as I said earlier. Because this can only take red, and red has already been taken. So we have to backtrack. Okay, remove uh, for this one. And also for this one. Uh, the idea is if we remove blue here, the next, uh, the only other option is green, and we cannot uh, remove green, so then we have to come back to this one. But this one, we have already tried the three colors we have tried red, we have tried blue. This was why we chose green. So actually, we have to backtrack again away from this one and go back to this one. This is, this is the idea. So suppose we make this to be green and then attempt to move forward, then this can be blue, or can only be blue actually, and this can now be green again, but we shall still have a dead end because this is still red. So, in fact, backtracking to this node wasn't helpful. We have to go all the way to the initial one and make it, let's say, blue. And suppose we this time choose to go with this one with three arcs first instead of this one. Make it red, then make this one green, then make that one green, and this one red. We will have a solution. All right, but the main idea is this heuristic says you should go for the one that has the highest degree. Okay, the next uh, heuristic is called list constraining value. So the last two heuristics have been talking about variables. Now this one is saying suppose a variable has been decided what value should you assign to it? So we are talking about the second method. If you remember in the backtracking algorithm, there were two important methods there. First one will choose a variable. So for that one, the two heuristics that we have already discussed, they will be implemented in that method. Then there is a method that will actually give us the ordering of the values. Which of the values should be tried first? And that's where this 
heuristic comes in list constraining value not variable list constraining variable value so what does it say say given a variable assigned to it the list constraining value in other words the value that rules out the fewest values for the remaining variables so this is somewhat contrary to what we were saying earlier uh, we were saying in the minimum minimum remaining values so choose a variable with the minimum remaining values mrv but having chosen that now when you come to assign the values we actually want to allow maximum flexibility to the neighboring variables so assign a value to this variable that will allow more options to the others okay so choose the least constraining value the value that will not constrain too much the remaining variable they should have an option to choose okay so this is the idea of this algorithm the point is this will allow us to continue with this solution uh, and it will not terminate immediately because if we choose a constraint of value the algorithm may actually terminate and we have to backtrack and choose another value whereas probably there are possibilities for a solution to be reached if we just move forward this is the idea okay so that's what we are saying here that selecting this value will leave values that can be assigned to other variables and that will lead to a solution quicker so let us see what we are saying suppose we are at this stage in the australian coloring problem we have already assigned two colors to southwest and northern territory and let's say we are considering queensland all right we have chosen queensland actually as our next variable let's say we have chosen queensland the question is what value should we assign to queensland what color should we assign to queensland for the moment it can take either red or blue it cannot take green of course because it is never in northern territory which is already green so the question is out of these two values which one should we take so this is where this heuristic comes it says choose the one that will allow flexibility to the remaining variables you see if you choose uh, red for Queensland the South Australia will still have an option of blue but if you choose blue South Australia will have no option at all it will have zero value for South Australia okay so the algorithm therefore will terminate in this case if you choose blue so this heuristic says no don't assign blue choose the the one that will allow flexibility for the remaining variables so it will constrain less the other variables and therefore we're going to choose right according to this heuristic okay so this is what it says let's see an example uh, a more complete example so here uh, in the same example now suppose we have decided to go for this variable maybe using the uh, the must constrain variable heuristic the one suppose we want to start with the one that has the the most degree the highest degree so we have decided this is the variable we want to choose first the question is what value should we assign to it what color so this lcv says choose a color that will not constrain the neighboring uh, nodes or neighboring variables for example you see this guy can only have red so if you choose red you will deprive 
this guy from the only color it can have therefore don't choose red for this node choose blue okay so I'm gonna choose blue for that node and now suppose we decide to go for this node next uh, so the options are either red or green so it doesn't really matter uh, in this case we can choose either because this one still will have the other option it will have only one option left anyway if we have chosen one if we have chosen red it will have green if we have chosen green it will have red so it doesn't really matter in this case uh, so let's say we choose red all right of course having chosen red if we are to go for this node next we have no option but to make it green so suppose we make it green now the next node obviously can only be red but that will lead to a dead end unfortunately okay so we have a dead end and so we have to backtrack it seems here where we were trying to make a choice we should have chosen green that probably would have allowed an option for this one let's see if we do that suppose we make this to be green then this can now be red and this can now be green okay because now it is the least uh, constraining value green is the least constraining value for this node because after choosing green we will still allow this node to have a red all right so this is the idea of this heuristic it will allow the solution to continue basically without breaking uh, if you choose a most constrained value the solution may break immediately right so so far we have seen three different ways of improving the backtracking search algorithm and all of them involve either selecting a certain variable or selecting a certain value the next for this heuristic however is not about selecting a variable or a value okay it's about storing some information that will allow you to look ahead to see if there is going to be an issue or not so that you can break immediately it is called forward checking okay so suppose a variable x has already been assigned what this heuristic says is look at each unassigned variable y connected to x and immediately delete from y's domain any value that is inconsistent with x okay because if you do that it will save you time I mean, maybe after deleting that variable you will see that there is no solution so you can backtrack immediately rather than waiting until you reach there okay so this heuristic eliminates branching on certain variables by propagating the information forward if forward checking detects a dead end the algorithm will backtrack immediately and therefore it will save time okay so the, the basic idea is keep track of remaining legal values for unassigned variables terminate the search when any variable has no legal values this requires using some data structure actually to keep this information so there is a cost here in terms of space so let's start our australian problem will start with all the variables having all the three possible colors now suppose we decide to assign red to western australia so the moment we do that the algorithm says go to all the neighbors of that uh, uh, state or region and remove red immediately because red there will be inconsistent with this assignment that we have just done 
So we can go to the Northern Territory and remove red. Go to South uh, Australia and remove red. So there we have only green and blue left. Green and blue. There is still a choice, so we can continue the search in this way. All right. So let's see. Suppose next we choose Queensland and we choose green for Queensland. So again, the algorithm says go to all the neighbors of Queensland and remove green because they cannot be green. They will not be consistent with Queensland. So we're going to go to Northern Territory and remove green. So it has only blue left. Uh, I'll go to South Australia and remove green. So again, it has only blue left. Okay. And go to uh, New South Wales and also remove green. So green has been removed here as well. Now let's say we go to Victoria next. And suppose we assign blue to Victoria. All right, so Victoria becomes blue. What does that mean? We have to go to all the neighboring states and remove blue. Unfortunately, one of those states is uh, South, West, South Australia, which had only blue left, so it becomes empty. Okay, and this is the problem. We can see ahead that assigning this blue will lead to a dead end. Because when we come to South Australia, we will have no color to assign. So this is the idea of this algorithm. It helps you to look ahead and see potential problem and backtrack immediately. Okay, so because of this, this algorithm will actually backtrack. It will not wait until it tries uh, South Australia and see that there are no colors, then it will backtrack. No, right now here, it can see that there is going to be a problem with South Australia. And therefore it will stop uh, this particular chain, backtrack and make some changes uh, from the assignment done before and then move forward. Okay, let's take an example of this one as well. So suppose we have chosen uh, to start this time with this node. And we have given it red. That should automatically remove red from the neighboring nodes. So as you can see here, red has been removed from both of these two nodes. Okay. Suppose we choose to go to this node next. And we assign it blue. Then blue should automatically be removed from this node. So you can see it has it is left with just the green. Okay. And suppose we go to this one and assign it red. So again, that says remove red right here as well. So this as this now. Both of them have only green. Okay, well, after, after assigning green to this, you see that there is, this, this is going to be uh, empty. So the algorithm should backtrack and make changes. Uh, let's say instead of uh, red, it chooses green for this one. Then this one still have red, this one still have green. So eventually the algorithm can complete. So this is the idea. The algorithm should be able to look forward and stop a solution that is starting to fail. Stop it at, at an earlier state to save time. Now, forward checking will propagate information from assigned to unassigned variables, but it doesn't provide early detection for all failures, only for some failures. If there is still a better heuristic, that we can use to get even uh, better yeah so for example here it is saying uh, northern territory and southern australia cannot be both blue this is what forward chaining will tell us uh, yeah so is there another algorithm that we can use to get uh, 
even faster solution or faster failure because each of them is good actually if it is faster failure we will try another option much faster than wasting time trying to explore a solution that will not lead to a result and the answer is yes there is it is called arc consistency so it says a more complex than forward checking but which backtracks sooner and therefore may be faster is the arc consistency heuristic so the idea here is instead of checking just locally uh, for the current node or for the ones adjacent to it at each point just make sure all the arcs are consistent so after you choosing each node and you assign a value for it check that that value will not be will not make the other acts to be inconsistent now in this particular heuristic constraints are treated as directed act as before so actually it deals with uh, constraints that are binary and it says the directed edge x y is consistent if and only if for every value of x there is some allowed value of y okay if that is not the case then it is not consistent and at that point we can actually delete the uh, x because the, the constraint is that we x must be consistent with y so if you have a value in x domain that will not be consistent with y you should just delete it okay so this is what we are saying here to make an inconsistent arc x y to be consistent we delete values from the domain d of x that causes the inconsistency so this is what we are saying for example uh, if you look at these two nodes okay this node can be rgb this node can be gb okay is this arc consistent well according to this definition it will be consistent if for any value you take in the domain of x there is a value in the domain of y that is allowed if you take r obviously you can have g or b if you take g you can have uh, again b if you take b you can have g so for any value you take in the domain of x there is an allowed value in the domain of y and therefore this arc is said to be consistent but consider this case this node has only g as an allowed value obviously if you take r we can have the g if you take b we can have the g as the corresponding value for y but if you take g we cannot have g as the corresponding value for the other node and therefore g here has to be deleted because it will create inconsistency this is what basically the arc consistency is saying okay uh, delete any value in the domain of x that will make it inconsistent with y where there is a constraint that connects x and y we have to delete any value here that will violate that constraint uh, it says note if the arc from a to b is consistent the reverse from b to a is not necessarily consistent it all depends on the problem okay sometimes it may be sometimes not also we should know that our consistency even though is very good still it doesn't detect every possible inconsistency all right now there is an algorithm for the r consistency it is called ac3 
okay our consistency number three the number here actually is just the version of the algorithm from the inventor who invented it it was the third version that uh, worked so it is called ac3 let's go through the algorithm so it takes a csp and return another csp but with reduced domains and if the domains are reduced obviously the solution can be found much easier by our backtracking algorithm this is the idea so the input to the algorithm is a, it is a csp which is a binary csp with variables x1 to xn all right it uses a queue uh, to keep the arcs initially actually it will store all the arcs in the given csp okay now this doesn't have to be a queue it can be any data structure actually but traditionally a queue is used all right so it creates a queue and actually it will store in the queue initially all the arcs in the given csp all right then we, it start a loop while the queue is not empty remove the first arc from the queue call it xi xj now take this xij and apply this algorithm or this method it say remove inconsistent values so basically it's going to delete from the domain of uh, xi any value that will not be consistent with the, uh, the domain xj okay yeah so now if there was some removal because this algorithm is going to return true or false actually okay if there was some removal of some values from the domain of x then you have to check again for each xk in the neighbors of xi add the arc xk xi to the q okay because the idea is we have just removed a value from the domain of x maybe before the removal another variable xk is consistent with x but now that we have removed something from uh, xi that xk may no longer be consistent with xi and therefore we need to add and check it there that's what we are doing here we are adding the arc xk xi to the q okay so this is the idea uh, and this is the algorithm that is removing the inconsistency all right so it receives an arc xi xj and is going to try and remove all the values in xi that are not consistent with the values in xj but at the same time it will return true if there was any removal or false otherwise this is why you can see the return type is is a boolean value that's why we say if then that is when you have to do this if you didn't remove anything there is nothing to do okay so let's look at this method again it start by initializing a variable removed to false we have not yet removed anything and then it goes through the values in the domain of xi for each x in domain of xi do if no value y in the domain of xj that will satisfy the constraint xy then delete the x from the domain of xi and based on that initialize this remove to true yes we have done some removal okay and so on so this is just trying to ensure the arc consistency uh, between xi and xj as we defined it before remember we said xi will be consistent with xj if for any value you take in xi 
there is an allowed value that you can find in xj so this is saying if we cannot find that value then we have to remove the x the little x here from the domain of xi and after doing that we have to initiate we have to update this boolean variable to true we have done some removal so this is basically how the arc consistency work and generally it reduces the work that is needed to solve a csp considerably uh, let's take uh, okay before we we move on what is the complexity of this algorithm it is actually n square d cubed where as you remember n is the number of variables and the d is the size of the domain because this consistency checking itself is d square so if we add that to what we are doing here it will give us this much all right let's see how this ac3 works in practice uh, so let's take a small example as we have here we have three variables the possible values are rgb for v1 possible values are rg for v2 and possible value uh, is only g for v3 so as we said the uh, ac3 will store in a queue all these three arcs v1 v2 v2 v3 and uh, v1 v3 it will store them in a queue and it will be dequeuing them one by one check if there is any inconsistency remove the relevant variables that need to be removed and so on so for example suppose we choose from the queue or with the queue from the queue the age v1 v2 now the question is is this domain consistent with this if we take any value here can we find a corresponding value in v2 obviously yes if we take r we can get g if we get g we can take r if we take b we can take either r or g so there is nothing to be deleted from the domain of v1 based on this arc okay let's try removing from our q arc v1 v3 all right so v1 v3 uh, is this arc and clearly there is an issue now because yes if you take r in v1 you can have g in b3 if you take b you can have g but if you take g in v1 you cannot have also g in v3 so there is an inconsistency with this value so we have to remove it all right now removing so that's what we are saying here that uh, the value that's going to be deleted is g from the domain of v1 and now when we remove uh, uh, this g we have to enqueue any h that connects to v1 because maybe before it was satisfying the constraint v2 v1 but now having removed g maybe v2 v1 is no longer satisfied so we have to enqueue it in the queue okay so we're going to enqueue v2 v1 uh, the arc and put it back in the queue all right so that's why you may see we're going to encounter another version of v1 v2 later Okay. right so suppose we dequeue next v2 v3 the question is is this domain consistent with this the answer is obviously not yes if you take r you can have g here but if you take g you cannot have g there is no value in v3 that shall that will satisfy this value so we have to remove this g given us uh, only r so that's what this is saying we have to remove 
g from uh, uh, from v2 and again if we remove that then you have to add any uh, link from some domain to v2 okay because that link may no longer be consistent since we have done some removal all right so if you consider v1 v2 one more time v1 v2 if you consider that after deleting the g here you see that now we have a problem with r r is no longer satisfied if you take r here we cannot have r here so you have to remove r again that leaves you with only b if you keep removing the remaining arcs you will see that there's nothing to do because there's only one value for each of these variables and they are all consistent okay so at the end the algorithm is going to return this as the solution actually okay so this is basically how ac3 works so in summary to, to complete the lecture uh, CSPs are a special kind of problems that are widely applicable. In CSP states are defined by the values of a fixed set of variables. Goal test is defined by constraint on variable values. And the algorithm that is generally used to solve a CSP is backtracking, which is a version of depth first search in which only one variable is assigned at each level. Uh, forward checking prevents assignments that can uh, guarantee letter failure and our consistency does additional work to constrain values and detect inconsistencies. Yeah, so this summarizes basically what we have learned in this lecture. Thank you very much.